All right, this is a video that goes over the delivery rubric. The delivery rubric is key to getting a good grade in the class. The majority of your points in the class come from uh, your presentations, the informative presentation, the persuasive, the group presentations. And in all those presentations, this exact same rubric is used. And so if you know this rubric, you'll do well on the presentations and then consequently you'll have a good final grade. So if you only know one thing about the course, make sure to understand this delivery rubric. Okay. Here's the full rubric. Expressiveness, fluency, uh, movement, facial expressiveness, eye contact, extemporaneous delivery, and use of visual aid. And I'll go through each one of those. The most important one, as far as the grading rubric goes, is going to be extemporaneous delivery. There are several different ways that you could give a presentation. You could do manuscript, you could do memorized, you could do extemporaneous. Uh, manuscript would be that you write it out word for word and then you read it to us. Memorized would be that you write it out word for word, you memorize it, and then you regurgitate it to us. Or extemporaneous, and that's what we do in this class. You have a really good idea of what you're gonna say. You know the topic really well, but you're not married to the specific wording. So you have not written it out word for word. Like this video that I'm doing right here, the only notes that I have is the PowerPoint here. So <clears throat> it's extemporaneous. There are positives and negatives to going with an extemporaneous style. If you go with a manuscript style, your fluency should be really good because you're just reading it to us. With extemporaneous, you can lose some points on the fluency uh, because you don't have it written out word for word. Uh, and Like myself, for example, I will have some fluency issues in this video because I'm going completely extemporaneous, but that's fine because the, one of the positives to going extemporaneous is that it seems more authentic. It seems more genuine when you have you know, some ums here, when you have a mispronunciation here. It just seems more genuine, authentic. So there are positives, negatives to extemporaneous, but it doesn't matter as far as the class goes, you do want to do extemporaneous. The way it's worded is spoke extemporaneously, naturally, conversationally. That's another good way to put it. That it's like you're having a conversation with someone. If you write it out word for word, you're really speaking at them. But if you uh, incorporate kind of an extemporaneous style, it seems more genuine, authentic, like you're actually trying to connect with the person, which is what you want to do in your presentations. Okay, so extemporaneous language or delivery is the first part. Expressiveness, it goes kind of hand in hand with it. If you write it out and you read it to us, it's going to have a tonal quality, a real monotone quality to it. It's not going to have a lot of expressiveness to it. With the expressiveness, that you have sufficient volume, uh, varied rate, varied pitch, that you kind of go up and down, that you change the timing of it. Pleasant vocal quality also goes along with this. Again, if you're going extemporaneous, you're probably going to have some of those just naturally because when we speak, this is how we speak. But again, if you write it out word for word, you might lose out on the very pitch, the very rate. So definitely keep that in mind. The next one is eye contact. So if we were doing this in person, <clears throat> basically you'd want to look around the room and you'd want to look at the different students and try to make eye contact with as many people as possible. If you have issues with that, you could maybe just slightly look over everyone's head. For this class, uh, or for this version of the class that we're doing right now, it's gonna be an online version. So when you do your presentations, you'll be looking at the camera which I know is not the same as making eye contact with people. But we still want to try to um, incorporate the idea that you're looking at a specific area, a specific like, person. You could think of it, the camera, as a person. Um, what you don't want to do is, again, write it out word for word, and you're just reading it to us. And some people, they'll write it out, and they'll have it on the, the small part of their computer, but you see their eyes just the entire time, and it's like, oh, this is so boring. So... Try to make eye contact with the camera for the online presentations. Movement. Basically that you have nonverbals that match up with your verbal message. That's one way of doing movement. So if you're like, I have three main points and you put up three fingers, that'll work. I was pointing in earlier and so that's a nonverbal that matched up with my verbal message. Um, and I also use my hands a little bit to speak. You do want to do that some. You don't want to overdo it but you do want to have some movement incorporated into your presentation. With the online uh, presentations, something that really comes up a lot is people will get the camera too close to their face, and so you'll be this far away, and so we can't see your hands at all, 
and you won't have any movement at all in the presentation. So make sure to have the camera far enough back like I do here that I can see my hands. That's for movement fluency. This is what a lot of people think of when they think of giving a presentation. And I touched on it earlier. When you go completely extemporaneous, the idea that you're going to have a little bit of fluency issues, it's a possibility. It definitely is for me. So the point of this, though, is that you would rather have some small fluency issues and seem genuine and authentic compared to um, reading it all word for word and having perfect fluency. You'd rather be more authentic than have perfect fluency. That's one way of putting it. So if you make some mistakes, don't worry about it. Just move on. It's only one criteria out of the seven different ones fluency is. On facial expressiveness. Okay, so this one's kind of weird. You know what it looks like when it's done right. For example, right there. My eyes kind of popped up. Saw my eyebrows go up. That's facial expressiveness. And you would like to have that in your presentation. Maybe a smile here and there. Some people, they'll just be dead face the entire presentation. And you don't want that. All that being said, I don't take off points on facial expressiveness because it feels like it could be misconstrued. And so if I give you like a two on facial expressiveness, it's kind of like I'm giving you a two on your face, if that makes sense. And so it seems a little weird. I generally don't take off on facial expressiveness. But you do know what it looks like when it's done correctly. And if you could try to incorporate things like uh, raising your eyebrows, smiling, things of that nature, um, to add that level of expressiveness, it really can, helps you connect with the audience. Uh, like her or dislike her, she has really good facial expressiveness, as you'll see here. And there's so much focus on this endorsement, but I also think it's important that a, a, an important part of my strategy in winning, winning was building a broad-based coalition of people. So while there's a focus on this one aspect of the coalition... It's almost like she's speaking with her eyes, the way they really pop and they really open up. Um, she also has other nonverbals that go along with her verbal message. And again, she's also uh, speaking extemporaneous here. And so you'll see some small fluency issues, but it does seem genuine and at least connected with the voters in her uh, precinct. Okay, so the last one's use of a visual aid. You are going to have some type of visual aid, like I'm using a Prezi here. You'll probably have like a Prezi or a PowerPoint. There are some instances where you could use um, some type of... Um, like if you're doing a presentation on cell phones and you had your cell phone and you showed it to us, you could do it like that. But for most of you, you'll probably use a, um, a PowerPoint. Some people have done presentations on, in, in class. They've done presentations with animals, like I've seen a hedgehog before. I think one of the other instructors saw a miniature horse. They brought it in uh, at the ag building. So you can have something physical that you could use for visual aid. But for most people, it's just going to be easier if you have like a PowerPoint or a Prezi. All right. Full delivery rubric, expressiveness, fluency, uh, movement, facial expressiveness, eye contact, extemporaneous delivery, and use of a visual aid. Make sure that you have all of those in your presentations. Um, some people, they won't have a visual aid or they'll have the camera too close and so they don't have any movement. They'll write out the entire thing and it's like, wow, you didn't, you didn't understand the rubric at all. So make sure that you understand this. If you don't understand anything that I went over in this video, please go over to the discussions. There's a section for questions. Post one there and I'll get back to you probably within about 24 hours or so. Thanks for watching.